good morning. I think it's the Friday after Hurricane Matthew. So uh, it hit what Wednesday, so Thursday, Friday, and you see um that's our gate that's up there. And this, I know you can't tell. Wait till I walk down. Sorry, I'm just now getting to the point where my phone is charged up enough that I can um, walk back out. That is the roof. That is crashed on. My car was right there. That's my neighbor's car and Jason's truck was underneath there. That is my neighbor's car demolished and stuck under here. So as you can see, uh, it's hard to get out. And believe it or not, so that's where Jason parks. That's my neighbor's and that's my neighbor's. And we got a car out of here yesterday. We pulled it and there is a car underneath there. You can't see it, but there is an actual car underneath there. So this and you hear the chainsaw. That is so car underneath there. There was a car underneath there and we got it out, even though it's all scratched up. Jason was parked here, so damage. You see the neighbor's car is still in there and my car was right here. That thing flipped up, down, up, down, up, down, and then it started breaking as the wind. And so it hit all the way up to the second story, hit our windows. I thought it busted out that window, but it didn't. Real quick, I'm gonna walk up the hill here and show you that we have a tree blocking our exit. Luckily, uh, some people came and took a couple chunks out. My brother Doug used his equipment and uh, got us out. And now that tree, these nice people are moving. So now these people can get out. So this is the destruction. It's hard to see, but that tree is blocking everyone. I would say about 30 or 40 people are blocked for the last couple days that way. And then way down there, that tree is blocking our exit. Um, so we couldn't get out even of the, uh, we couldn't get out of the, uh, what do you call this place? The condos. We were blocked in for days. Not that we're going anywhere. Still without power, internet, anything. But there's a big, big tree. It's hard to see. And you can see the traffic going by on Ocala Road. But our exits were totally blocked by that huge tree. And these nice people came and uh, brought that in. My brother cut this tree down enough that we could walk through and get us small cars out. But the guys with the big trucks, now they're they're doing this. And we're so thankful for this uh, group. I don't know who this is, but I will post it later. Um, most of these people are volunteers. The one down by the end of the road, um, a bunch of boys that were teenage, teenage aged, <laughs> I can't even speak, came and took uh, chainsaws in their truck and jumped out and cut just enough the tree for us to finally get out. And they said, we're volunteers. Um, we're gonna go help other people. And I don't even get their names. No one knows. They're local teenage boys who had a chainsaw, had their truck, and they felt like we're bored at home. We're gonna go help other people. And they jumped out and cut that tree and got over 101 um, units here. So that's a bunch of people. Um, that's just the units. All these families couldn't get out for the last couple of days. So they got us out. And now the people that were just in this particular section are now, like I said, my brother Doug came and cut some pieces off and uh, allowed small cars to get through. But now they're actually gonna pull it out and make it where all the cars can get through. And now people, see, we can get out now, finally. Um, a lot of the town is without gas, without ice. Uh, we heard Publix is opening back up. And um, now we can get to it though. We couldn't get to it before, but we're still without power. And uh, some trees down and stuff there. And a couple of the units here, the trees went through the house. I'm not gonna walk over there right now because I have limited uh, access, but. One of our neighbors is also um, Marine, and he's back home now, but he has, he's also an officer of the law, and he's been going out on ship duties, I think from four in the morning to, sorry, four in the afternoon to four in the morning, and he, while his family sits here without parents, stuff, he goes and helps other people as far as Mexico Beach, as far as he can get with a three-wheeler, 
um, a boat, like an airboat, and he's a Florida wildlife officer. And so we want to say thank you to Nick, our neighbor, who, um, you know, and then he comes back home at 4 in the morning and helps us here, sleeps a couple hours, and then goes back out and helps people. I was going to try to get a picture of his vehicle, but that's probably not a good idea. Um, you know, just out of safety. His name is Nick, and I don't want to give his last name for safety, but thank you. It's chainsaws. Jaws of life. We really appreciate this. Um, I am going to see... I know it's not picking up a lot of destruction. You can't see that tree. That tree down there. That tree. It's a huge, like, I don't know, five-story tree it was blocking, and they got us out. And then the structure here is, uh, you know, again, there were five cars underneath there, and now there's two cars. We got some of them out, although damaged, including my car and uh, Jason's car. And then over here, there's a big tree. I'm gonna walk around. These guys, again, I don't know what tree service they're from. They are volunteering. They are getting us out. They won't pick up, you know, any of this debris and stuff, which is fine. We have people for that, but I mean, this is all, I don't know if you can get this, from the hurricane. All this. I don't know if you can see over there a tree uh, I can't get it to focus right a tree fell down in between the buildings luckily it laid down right between the buildings and not on the buildings see it it is Let's see if I can do this I have more respect for um that tree is right here oh, it just focuses on my finger there's a huge tree that went between the buildings and then this is the front. Let me zoom back out. Just limb after limb after limb after limb. After limb. Now you can see it was blocking her exit. This was blocked here. This exit was blocked. Then that exit was blocked. And then, like I said, my brother, thank God, came over and helped least get some cars through small cars and then at the very bottom of our complex there is uh the trees went across and we were unable to leave for a couple days but now they're getting us done i will post who these nice gentlemen are like you see now they're just getting it just enough like moving it just sitting it down so that we can get cars out um we have some elderly neighbors who uh rely on stuff for medical I needed to get out and um, we did have a loss here but she wasn't due to the hurricane it was right as the hurricane was coming unfortunately she passed um, our neighbor who's been here many 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 years and I don't want to talk about that but anyways that was right before she had um, cancer unfortunately and passed away the day before the storm hit and uh, so we're all really sad here at our lovely condos that we love everybody here okay that tree I don't think it's gonna zoom in and I know again I'm not there is a big big tree you can't tell but it's all down and then if you look up to the park see all those limbs these trees that I'm focusing in because I'm zooming in those trees are probably eight stories tall and you can see the damage at the top and there's still pieces hanging so as the uh, winds are still here and when we get a good gust we might lose another big huge branch on top of these houses right here so overall very very grateful and very very lucky um for people like my brother people like nick who's um service in the marines and service as an officer and has helped us here and when he has to go out every day um brooklyn's uh brooklyn's significant other matthew also we appreciate him going out as an officer every day in Brooklyn being home while he's out helping others. And um, wow, I'm gonna get emotional because when you think about it, like an officer, you know, you don't want to get pulled over or anything, get a ticket. But when it's like this time when there's destruction and natural devastation, seeing an officer and having an officer to show up to help and check on you is like, is emotional like thank you thank you thank you for all who served all the city linemen all these guys here they're from a tree company that's not even in Tallahassee 
they're away from their families. They came up here to get these trees moved so we can get out and get help if we need it. And um, city linemen, uh, Homestead, even people from Homestead are here putting up power for people. Um, uh, Scott Maddox, our commissioner, stays up on Facebook and posts all the kind of updates. I get more information from Scott Maddox and from Chrissy from WTXL than almost anywhere else. So thank you, Scott Maddox. Thank you, Chrissy Souders. Um, Christine Souders, sorry, professional. I got to call her Chrissy, but Christine Souders from WTXL for keeping us af afloat of what's happening and Scott Maddox and all those other people. Um, Greg Tish has been keeping us updated. Um, we can't thank you guys enough. And when it comes to stuff like this, and you get it gets really emotional because um, these people are staying up. Scott Maddox is hardly getting any sleep, and he's done this the last three hurricanes. And the only information I could get was from him. So, um, regardless of politics and and all that aside, when it comes down to the nitty gritty, you see who who really helps. Andrew Gilliam has been out and about helping. Um, Rick Scott's been on TV. We haven't been able to see him, but we heard on the radio and stuff. And we appreciate, again, politics aside, I, I can't thank Scott Maddox, uh, Greg Tish, and others um, that have helped so much. So thank you, everyone. I know I'm forgetting some people, but this is getting long because I got emotional. But here we go. They're actually going to go up the hill and take that tree down, too. So I can't believe these volunteers. Again, I feel horrible not knowing what tree company they're from, but I will post it. They are volunteering this and away from their own families, helping us complete strangers while uh, their own families take care, you know, back home. So just know that this debris that's around um, has been moved by the neighbors. So this is only about a fourth of what it was. It's not bad at all, considering what um, Mexico Beach and Panama City and all the others, but. All right, we really appreciate, again, there's those trees, and you can't tell, but that palm tree, there's when the tops have just been knocked out, like all damaged, all the limbs are gone. And uh, the big tree up there, I guess I could walk up here real quick. Here I am. Um, little or no sleep because without power, and all that's hot, and I have to admit, the day is the first day we've had a tinge of cool air. It's Friday after Hurricane Michael. Uh, I think it's October, I don't know, 10th or 11th. I don't even know the day, date. The power is out on Tharp Street. Let me see this. I don't think you can see this. It's hard to see because I'm not a photographer and uh, definitely not a news reporter. I don't know how you guys do it. Let's come here and take a picture of this tree. And then, I know this is boring, limbs. And these limbs don't seem big, but your car can't get through them. And this is a couple days after. So people have been moving the limbs and stuff. This is uh, San Luis Park. You can see. Thank gosh. That's the entrance to San Luis Park from our condos. Um, this tree has just, you can't even tell how big that tree is. It's weird how like in person it's huge. This tree has just been, every limb has been sheared. But that tree, see the roots? It just uh, toppled over. These are the roots. It's hard to see. This tree is probably 50 feet tall. And I can't get a good picture Luckily, it found behind the neighbor's house, neighbor's house tree, that close, and it, there, it goes from here all the way, hit the park. I'll go up here. I am out of breath, you guys. A little food, a little sleep. Um, wow. You guys don't know what it looks like normally, so it's amazing. Um, the amount of destruction, even being this far away from the eye of the storm. Wow. Holy smokes. This is San Luis Park. This is the woods and uh, yeah, that is crazy. Trees down everywhere. 
Holy smokes. Wow. Um, maybe in the next couple days I'll do a video through the park. But this is a... Yeah. It's bad. We're lucky. We are really lucky that this tree did not fall on every one of my neighbor's house up here. It's crazy. We're lucky that the carport storage thing cover being metal didn't break apart in a million pieces. I mean, it did break apart in a million pieces, but that it didn't hit one of us in the head or go through the glass. Um, so we, we got really lucky and this is just all clean up and the power will come on eventually. It may, we're being told up to two weeks, but then we hear that some people in town have power, but then you don't know if they have power because they have generators or if they've got some grids back on. Um, we are not getting news from the outside, so you guys are all getting that, so. Um, I want to ask this guy what service he works for, but I don't want to embarrass him because he's on the phone. He might not want to be on camera. Some people want to volunteer, but they don't want to be acknowledged. So. Can I get the name of your tree service? I'm just doing... Sorry. It's Canary Tree Service. So Canary Tree Service is out here helping us. If any guys after the store need help, Canary Tree Service. Um, again, we appreciate them coming out and helping us. This car is damaged. It's gonna be a while. All right, long video. Everybody has a video. I'm not saying that we have any. We're definitely far. Like we're okay. Everything's fine. We survived. We're grateful. And uh, the store is out of power. The other side, Vintage Robert Square has some damage to some some of the buildings. The Rock Gym lost the roof. Chop lost the roof. Giant De Cosmos Gallery lost the roof. From what we can tell so far, we still have a roof, no power, but we don't know how much water got in or anything else that may have damaged or come through. All right, you guys, thank you. <laughs> don't come to my house or my vicious dog will, will kill you. I can't even get in my own gate because <laughs> the gate's bent. It's me, JD, say hi. Say hi, JD. Hi, JD. All right, so that's it. That is a, uh, thank you for being with us.